Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today we're going to do the question single number, and I'm going to show you two approaches to solve this problem. First, we're going to use a map to solve this problem, and then we're going to go ahead and optimize that solution using XR. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. That really helps me create this content for you guys. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the problem. Awesome. So we are given a non-empty list of integers here. And every element appears twice except one element that only appears once. So it's pretty easy to understand this question. Here we have two twos and one one. And uh, we just need to return the element that appears once. And in this question, we have this four. And this is the element that we're, we need to return because everything else is in a pair. Um, OK, so the first, um, the first solution that would come to my mind if I see a question like this is going to be using a um, dictionary to solve this problem and to keep track of the count. So I will go ahead and walk you through that solution first before we um, see how we can optimize on space for this solution. Awesome. So let's do a quick run through of the solution and then we can go ahead and optimize this. So the first thing we want to do here is create a mapping of how many um, ones there are and then how many twos there are and how many fours there are. So our map will look like this. So we will index it by the number. So for example, four will be mapped to one and then one will have um, frequency two, and then two will also have frequency two, right? So at the end of this, what we can do is we will iterate over the map and return the item with the frequency one, because that is the single item. And we'll just go ahead and grab this four here and then return this. So in terms of time and space complexity, the time complexity for this is going to be O of N. And the space complexity is also going to be O of N. And that's because we are creating this external structure to store our um, data while processing, right? So well, let's go ahead and look at this code quickly and then we'll come back here and optimize this using XOR. Awesome. So I've created my frequency dictionary here, which is what we will use to track our, all our mappings. And what I'm going to do now is iterate over my nums list. So I'll say for a num in nums, um, I'm going to check if that number is uh, not in frequency, then what I'm going to do is index by that number. So I will say frequency num is equal to one. So I want to initialize it to one. So if four is in the first place, it will get initialized at one. And all the other numbers here will get initialized to two. So if I just return the number that only has a count of one, um, then I will have that single number, which is what I'm looking for. OK, so that's the first uh, case. And then else we will, if that number occurs again, that means it's not a um, single number, so we will increment the count. So I will say frequency num plus equal one, okay? So that's good. And then lastly, what I'm going to do is iterate over my nums array again. Um, and I will say for num in nums, if I find if frequency at that index num is equal to one. So this is where we catch which number is a single number, right? Because it never got incremented in this else because our map never encountered it again, right? So if that is equal to one, then what we can do is return that number because that will be our single number. Okay, so let's give this a run. Okay, awesome, and submit. Awesome, so that works. All right, now let's move on to our second more optimized solution. Okay, awesome, now let's see how we can use XR to solve this problem. So the advantage of using XOR is that we can do this in place. So while our time complexity will still be the same, we will now reach um, a O of 1 space complexity using this solution. And the thing to realize about XOR and how this applies to the problem is having an understanding of how XOR works. So let's go ahead and look at some properties of XOR. So if we look here, and if I take an XOR of any number with itself, right? So if I take the XOR of any number with itself, if I take uh, let's say 100 and 100. So this is um, binary for 4, right? So it will be 2 to the power 0 and then 2 to the power 1 and then 2 to the power 2, which gives us 4 here. So if I convert this to binary and I have 100, and if I do 100 and then I XOR 100, right? My answer will be 0. And why, why is that? You may wonder, right? So if we look at the truth table, um, what XOR does is it converts um, if we give it, if it sees two ones, it will return a zero, right? And if it sees two zeros, so if, if, if we do place by place, right? So if we, if it's one comparing one, right, we got a zero. So that's how XOR works. And that's how we can apply 
this thinking um, to solve this problem. Okay, so let's take this example from the question here and we have the two, two, and then one, right? So if we kept accumulating our XORs, um, what would that look like? So here we have, we will have, um, so if we convert two to binary, that is one zero, right? Um, two to the power one is two. And if we XOR by two, we get a zero, right? And if we keep XORing by one, um, zero XOR one, you can see here, zero XOR one will give you one, right? So that's how we, we know which one is not canceled out. Like which element in our uh, number is in our list is not canceled out. Okay, now you're probably wondering if the arrangement was in this way where the one was in the middle, would the XOR still work? And the answer is yes, it would still work because when we do the XOR of these two and then do the XOR of uh, the next element, the similar bits would still get canceled out and leave the bit that does not did not um, equate to zero and give us the result zero for our XOR, right? So that's how we will be able to find out what is the item that we did not XOR with itself. And that will be the single item. Awesome, so I'm back in the code again, and this time we're going to create our accumulator, so I will call this ACC. This is where we're going to store our, keep storing our XOR values in the loop. So I will initialize this to zero, and then what I'm going to do is iterate over my nums. So for num in nums, um, I'm going to uh, use the accumulator to XOR the numbers. So I will say ACC um, XOR uh, equal to nums, num, okay, yeah, so I'm, I, I will keep accumulating the num. And then what we're going to be left with is just the number that uh, didn't equate to zero. So we are going to go ahead and return return the accumulator because that will be holding that value that is not zero, right? That is a single number. Okay, so it looks good. Let me go ahead and run this code. Okay, it looks like it's working. Awesome, that works. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. This way I can create more content for you guys and help you guys out in solving these questions. If you have any questions or if you wanna share your solution below, you're welcome to do that in the comments. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments as well. I will do my best to answer them. All right, happy coding, guys.